Good morning, Open Door. Welcome to another incredible service. As we all get ready to stand and worship the Lord this morning.
gratitude I could sing this song as I often do but every song must end and you never do let's lift our voices so I
just lift up. So what? I praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a don't know what to say, when we don't know what to do, all we have to do is throw up our hands and say, hallelujah, our God has got this, He's the King of Kings, He will see us through this, we need not fear, we need not worry, thank you Lord, we get to worship your name, hallelujah, we praise your name, we praise your name, oh Lord, even when it doesn't seem enough, we worship you Lord. Come on, my soul. Hey, well, don't you get shy on me? Lift up your soul. Cause you've got a lot to work.
amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch, a wretch like me. Who are we, Lord Jesus, that you would call on us? Who are we that you would deem us worthy and say, I choose you. I fill you with my most precious Holy Spirit. Who are we, Lord Jesus? Lord, I feel like we're like David when you said that you will establish your kingdom through him. When he asked, but who am I? I'm the least of the clans and you chose me. How incredible, Lord Jesus, is that we get to have this privilege of being part of your great plan. The fact that you've chosen us, the fact that you've loved us, the fact that you've called us and set us apart for your kingdom, for your purposes to reign, to rule through us. How amazing is this grace? How amazing is your love, O Lord? I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. Oh, I can see it now. Oh, I can see the love. the broken to life. Let us not take this for granted, but our Lord Jesus has done on our behalf, laying down his life, sacrificing himself, beaten, broken, bruised, so that you and I can have life, and life more abundantly. God is calling this church, calling each and every one of us to a greater walk, a greater freedom to do the incredible work that he has set out to change the world, to show a lost world. He loves them. He cares for them. Thank you, Lord, that you've chosen us. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We worship you. And the church says, amen, amen. Greet the person next to you. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. For those of you joining us online, Good to have you with us. Hope you are blessed within the service. Worship you, Lord. The best place to be here on a Sunday is in the house of the Lord, where you're going to be encouraged, where the Lord will uplift, break every chain that's holding us back. I want to take this opportunity, and I'm going to go straight into the offering. And I want you to, I want you to remember these words. The seeds you're sowing, you're sowing into the future. I want you to just take a moment, for a moment, look around you. Just look for a moment around you. And the beauty of this church is you're going to see that we do not just have young people here. We do not just have middle class aged people. Do I fall under that now? Middle aged. We don't just have the old with us. I'm, being, I'm saying something so beautiful. <laughs> guys, 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 church, just be so privileged. Younger people, the fact that you have the older, older, the fact that you have the younger with you. You know, this church only exists today because there were people that before you were sowing seeds into this church so that you can hear the gospel, so that your life can be changed. What an incredible testimony to think about. Do not think that your seed goes to waste when you sow it. And I think so many people get lost, they forget that. 
I say this often and I will say this continuously. I am a product of this church because people have gone before me and have invested into someone like me. So when you're sowing your seed this morning with the baskets going around, I want you to keep this in mind. You're sowing into a good future where people are going to become someone God has called them to be. Amen. Hey, it's good to be here. <laughs> I think over the many years I've had a greater respect for older people because they've walked with me. They've helped me get to where I am today. And that's why I say to the younger people, don't take that lightly. The fact that you have these people that have got wisdom, got knowledge, they've been through it. They know the walk. Nothing's new. Satan just changes his uh, wording. But it all stays the same. They know what you're going through. And I know that the older people need the younger people for their energy for their passion. But passion and energy that is not well directed could be very dangerous as well. So let's be grateful for every single person here this morning. So Lord Jesus, we take up the tithes and offerings as we think about this church and the vast diversity of age groups we have around us. We say thank you so much for that, Father God. And Lord Jesus, we sow our seeds today into fertile soil, knowing that one day there's going to be a young person that's going to reap the benefit of what we took our time to do this morning. And we thank you for that. So bless that offering in Jesus' mighty name. And the church says, Amen, Amen. Over to Pastor Julius. everybody this morning all good to be in church this morning we're excited to be here and we're going to worship the lord some more but not in song but in a bit of prayer this morning are you always ready to pray welcome back for pastor johan and judy back from zambia come on let's give them a hand there's really a generational thing happening and every now and then I, I, I'm stirred, and, and the devil started this morning talking about the generations and just how the generations are, are present in our church. And I always brag to other people and say, we've got the very old and the very young in our church. And we've got the in-betweens and all of those that feel they're still young, they're still here as well. Those that feel they're older, they're here as well. But God has blessed us with a multi-generational church, a multi-racial church, multi everything church. God has just blessed us. Amen. So we're going to be focusing this morning on the doors that are closing. Okay, so we've been speaking a lot about the open doors. If you can get that slide up, my first slide. If Thank you. Shut the door. Come on, tell the person next to you. Billy, tell Carol next to you there. Shut the door. How many times have your parents told you that over the years, your grandparents, were you born in a cave? Have you heard those words before? Why? Well, look at the door behind you. Shut the door. Amen. And so many times we talk about open doors, but we also need to talk about closed doors this morning. God closes certain doors so that he can open other doors. We know the saying that's not in the Bible, that God shuts a door and then he opens a window. We know it's not in the Bible, but that is a truth in God's Word that when God often cl closes a door, He does it for a purpose. He doesn't only close a door because He feels like it's a fun thing to do. We're going to close the door now. Let's see what happens. No, God has got purpose in what He does. Amen. God has got great purpose and the doors that He opens. And we thank God this morning for Elaine. Elaine, that we say this morning that we would shut that door on sickness. We shut, shut that door on dizziness. 
we shut that door and every onslaught of the enemy upon your family and upon your life and upon your physical body this morning. And we pray healing. We open the door that is already opened by Christ. The door of healing is opened over your life. God has been faithful in that area. He's going to continue to heal you, continue to open that door in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We stand together this morning that every chain of affliction that has come over your body and over your family and every discouragement that you might feel this morning, that it would lift off you this morning in Jesus' mighty name. And we declare this morning freedom over you. Won't the people that are around there with, uh, with Elaine, just pray with her quickly there. Just, uh, Bev, won't you just lay hands there with Elaine. Father, we thank you this morning. Elaine has been through a torrent time. She's been back to hospital. She had a fall. And we pray this morning that every onslaught of the enemy, in the mighty name of Jesus, be stopped. Every assignment of sickness and every spirit of infirmity, in the mighty name of Jesus, we take authority over you, you demon from hell. We say this morning you have no right over this family. We shut the door on you as Christ shut the door on you already. And we declare it this morning. We stand in agreement this morning that nothing will touch your body in the mighty name of Jesus. That death will not come over you. That spirit of death, we rebuke it in the mighty name of Jesus. And we say, be gone with you in Jesus' mighty name. And even this morning, that strength will fill your body right now in the mighty name of Jesus. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet. That the blood of Christ that is upon you and the stripes of Jesus, you have been healed, 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 healed in the mighty name of Jesus. And we say, be gone with you, spirit of infirmity. Be gone with you over this body. Be gone with you, chains of affliction in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we speak healing over your body now in Jesus' name. And we pray for the whole family that is worried and fearful. Father, we pray that every spirit that has come against them will be stopped in Jesus' mighty name. And every financial blessing will come to this family from the parents to the children to the grandchildren. And we pray for a blessing to flow now. And in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all of God's people say, Amen. This is church. Amen. Let's move on to the next slide. My introduction this morning, a door is used in more than one way. It is an entrance to the new spaces as you enter, but it can also be closed. And we've established that. Closed for protection, position, preservation, preparation, and more than often to new revelation leading to another open door. I've got those points on the next slide if you're trying to write them down. Don't be too stressed to write them down. Why does God close a door? For your protection. We fight often against things, but doors need to be closed. You close your door at night for protection. The same way God shut the door in Satan's face. I mean, God shut the door when he went to the cross. God shut the door when he opened up the grave and Christ was raised to life. God shut the door on death. Amen. God shut the door on sickness by his stripes that he took on his body. God shut the door on every infirmity and every chain and every uh, possession and oppression when he defeated Satan. Amen. God shut the door through his son, Jesus Christ, for your protection. Secondly, for your position. God positions you when he closes the door. He can be alone with you now. Now you're sitting with God. You can hear Him. He's speaking to you. When you want someone's attention, you, sh you close that office door and you say, Buti, no gaan ons praat. Now we're going to talk. You sit down with your, with your children when you want to speak and you position them with you and you say, listen now carefully to me. I'm going to give you some instruction. Hey, Dave, when your kids don't want to listen, you shut the door and you say, come on, time to listen Tyler, time to listen, Daisha. We're going to talk a little bit now. Family, let's sit down and have a family gathering. God positions you to hear His voice. God positions you so that you are not entangled with the voices of the world or the voices of the enemy or the voices of your own flesh. Amen. There's three voices that you can hear. God's voice, Satan's voice, and the voice of the flesh. Amen. So you and I this morning, also God preserves us when He shuts the door. He preserves you. 
from whatever the enemy has thrown against you, he preserves you. From whatever you're going to do that is stupid in your next move, God might preserve you from your own stupidity. How many of you know that? God's done it many times with me. I'm not exempt to that at all. Ask my wife. She knows that I make stupid decisions often. Amen. But then God's grace comes because I'm the head of the home. God blesses me to get wisdom from Him to hear. Even if I've made a mistake, sorry, I say sorry, I move on. We move on with God. Amen. God preserves you even from your own silly mistakes. Some of you have made great, grave mistakes in your life. Some of you feel like you haven't recovered from that places, but God will even preserve you from that. Amen. God puts you also in a place of preparation when He shuts the door. God's preparing something new for a new season that's to come. God has to shut certain doors for new doors to open. I'm excited that God is opening all kinds of new doors. I'm hearing all the time of new doors opening for people in place of work in our church. God has blessed our church. People have been blessed. I've sat with people one week in my office. Next week, they got two job opportunities. Amen. Amen. Robert. Robert started his new work. He took the one door that opened. He's in the new job. Amen. Praise God for that. (laughs) Stephen, you haven't heard yet. Stephen's gone for an interview. Amen. Praise God. We spoke last week about it. God's opening new doors. That door might not be the door, but there is a door, and it's opening up in Jesus' name. Amen. And so God prepares you for the next season. When God closes the door, He closes that door so that you can be prepared for what He's going to open next. Amen. He closes that door so that He can say, don't focus on the closed door anymore. Don't cry over spilt milk. Amen. You cannot stay in the past. You cannot say, oh Lord, if you only opened that door for me. God has already moved on from the closed door and he's moved on to the open door and he says, it's open. But you're still crying by the closed door and saying, why Lord, I need this door open. That door is the door to destruction. But God says, I've given you a door of life on this side, and you're ignoring the open door, the thing that God wants you, ignoring the open door, the thing that God wants you to be, invite all your friends and family, the open door. I mean, God wants you to focus on the door that is opening. It's all about surrendering to God when it comes to doors that open. We pray the prayers as a religious thing, Lord, close doors and open doors, but then we're not happy with the doors God's closing because we want that door, Lord. And you know what? The same door that you've cried at often and many times can be in a new form with an open door and God gives you more in the same area that you prayed for but through an open door into a new area. But it is actually linked to the door that closed. But because you're holding on to disappointment and you're holding on to that thing, God says, I can't even turn you now because you're choosing the the worst thing to the better thing. And God wants to give you better. And God is a God that loves you. Amen. And also, when the God closes the door, He wants to bring revelation to your heart. You need to become quiet when the door closes and begin to hear what God's voice is speaking to you. The Holy Spirit, through His Word, through the counsel of many people, wisdom comes around and people speak into your life. And you begin to read the Word and you begin to listen for the small, still voice. God begins to bring revelation when He closes the door. Amen. I believe God's prophetically speaking to many people here this morning. Ivan, how are you, my friend? There's he at the back. Amen. Praise God. And so God closes the door for his purpose and for our protection. Let's move on from there. Amen. Matthew 7, verse 7 to 8, our main scripture for today. I love this passage of scripture. It says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Ask, seek, and knock, which spells ask. A-S-K. When you take the first letters from those three words, it spells ask. A-S-K. Ask, and it will be given to you. Have you asked the Lord? These are steps that God says we must take. Have you asked God? Many times we don't ask because we are stressing so much that we begin to become quiet. How many of you know that when you speak it out to the Lord, He hears your prayer? Have you asked God? The Bible says He knows what you need before you even ask, but yet He still says, ask me. You don't have because you do not 
ask. I believe we need to begin to ask in faith what we desire from God so that God can move on our behalf. I believe that many of us need to write down the things we trust in God for and we need to begin to ask for those things. How many of you have asked God? You said, no, I've heard people say to me, God's too busy to listen to me. Have you heard that statement before? God's too busy, you can't listen to my things. Ask the Lord. Are you trusting God for the dreams, for the greater things, for the great vision that God has shown you before? How many, how many of you are asking God in faith for things? If a dream is too small, then God is not needed in your dream. You need to be scared by the things you ask. Amen. In the church, we're asking for God to multiply. We're asking for God to open new doors into community. We're asking for God, and God has blessed us. As we said, four schools have opened. Kevin, Rebecca, um, Catherine, and all of them are going out to the schools. Jordan. Pereira, they're all going together. They've got four schools they're ministering into right now. There's a door open for us to teenagers. I mean, there's a door. If you can't recognize it, there's a door into the community. God continually opens doors, but we need to begin to ask. I'm imploring you this morning, write something down before you leave the service that you need to ask God. Is it salvation over your family? Is it healing for like for Elaine? Is it, is it breakthrough? Is it is it that you feel depressed and you need to be lifted out of that place? Are you in a financial place? Whatever it is, begin to ask God to move that stone that's in your way. And you need to knock. How many of you know? Knock, knock. Knock and it will be open to you. Knock. You know, God wants us to move many times. We can become so inundated and we can become so frozen in our position that we sit down and we don't knock. God he wants us to knock. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. Amen. We know that we need to ask according to God's will, but many times we are quiet and we're not searching and we're not wrestling like Jacob did. Amen. Jacob wrestled with the angel of the Lord, which you know in the Old Testament refers to Christ himself. Amen. He wrestled with this man, and he went through the night. And you know what, what Jacob was afraid of what's going to happen the next day when he meets his brother Esau. He was afraid and he wrestled with God. I cannot go unless you bless me. I won't let you go. And the angel had to tap him on the hip and take his hip out of joint. Amen. And then that socket out of joint. And the, even the Israelites or the Jewish people still today don't eat from that part of the lamb where there's a joint out of that socket. Amen. That place. Jacob left with a limp. How many of you know that many of you are walking with a limp, the scars from the past, the things that have happened in your life, the disappointments, but there is a testimony that you've wrestled with God. Amen. Pastor George used to say, don't trust a man that doesn't have a limp. Amen. Don't trust someone that hasn't wrestled with God. God wants you to wrestle with Him in prayer. Not a thing of God, I know that you're going to do it, amen. You're already agreeing with the word of God. But you need to wrestle through your own thoughts, get rid of certain things, and open up your mind to the word of God, your heart to the word of God, and get the word into your spirit so that you can speak it over that situation, wrestle through the things, but ask God to guide you. Ask God to lead you. Ask God to go before you. How many of you are praying with faith, wrestling with God over situations right now? God is going to leave. There might be some scars left when you're out of a situation. There might be some bad memories left when you're out of a situation. But when you come out like Jacob on the other side, you might have a limp. You know, not like a gangster. Brook you know? Hang. <laughs> Even the guys that weren't shot in the leg. You know where it started? Tupac was shot and he started limping and all the rappers start limping like him. Now. Xie. Os. Huh? Osh. Huh? Yeah. There's a couple of ex-gangsters here now. Are you reaching for the Glock? Huh? Okay. Okay, people, let's move on from that place. I'm not a great gangster. Okay. Um, but the thing is, even with that limp, even with that scar, when you look at that thing, it reminds you 
what happened in your life, but there's a testimony linked to the scars. There's a breakthrough linked to it. There's a healing. There's something of glory to God that comes through that limp, through that scar. When people say, what's the scar all about? That's when God took me through something, but I came out the other side with a limp, but I also came with a testimony to say that God is victorious, that God is the healer, that He's the restorer. My family went through a deep valley of things, but they threw on the other side all walking like Tupac, but we're going to go for Jesus. Amen. We're going to continue to run for Jesus, even though we have scars. We are not immune to life, but Jesus looks after us. The Holy Spirit counsels us. He comforts us, and we come through on the other side with a testimony of God's goodness, His grace, and His mercy. Thank you, Lord. So continue to ask, to knock, and to seek. Let's move on from, from, from there. We cannot see the better that God sees, and this can lead to better. Amen. Many times, because I said, like in the beginning, the illustration of crying by the closed door, because you cannot see what God sees, and you hold on to the situation, and you hold on to the emotions, and you hold on to the scars, and you hold on to the hurt, and you hold on to the unforgiveness, and the bitterness and the offense that people have brought against you, you can become bitter. You must come to the better that God wants for you, not the bitter. God wants to take your bitter and make it better. Amen. And you, this is something for you to remember this morning. When you think of the bitterness that the enemy has brought into your life, God wants to turn it around and say, man, I've got something better. Look at your right, and the door is already open. Don't hold on to the brokenness of the past, but let God build into the future that He has for you. Amen. Because the past can have much brokenness, and we can be caught there, and the past can be a prison, or it can propel you into the promises of God. We need to move into the things that God has for us. Let's move to the next one there. Amen. God closes the door on fear and He opens it to peace. I want to speak to you about that this morning because often the enemy uses fear for us to stop trusting the Lord, to stop having faith. And we know during COVID people had all kinds of banners and stickers of fear, faith over fear. I want to say you this morning, not only faith, but God wants to give you peace this morning. Peace in every situation. When your life has been threatened, when you've gone through things, when you've struggled through situations, and your enemy has made you fearful of what might happen tomorrow or what might not happen tomorrow, God says to you this morning, I'm going to take your fear and I'm going to give you peace. Let's look at the scripture that speaks to us out of the book of John. It says this morning, John 20 verse 19, on the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Does the Bible say to us, do not fear man? What can man do to you? But fear God. Amen. You and I need to fear God. We need to reverence God. We need to know that even if our life is at, at risk this morning, even if we are standing here this morning and we're saying, I'm suffering from a sickness that the doctors cannot sort out, whatever it is this morning, God wants to take that fear that the enemy is placing in your mind and in your heart, and he wants to speak peace over you this morning. I'm going to ask you to take your neighbor's hand quickly for a second there. Just take their hand. We're going to pray peace over the situation. Because many people are inundated with fear. Many people are, you know what happens in the ministry often? We look at the vastness of the, of the congregation. We look at the vastness of the work that's ahead. I mean, Pastor George, Pastor Gale, everybody that's been in ministry, every minister that's retired that's sitting here this morning, you know that fear. When you look ahead and you think, this is a massive task. We've got a ship to, to steer. And when God begins to steer that ship, sometimes the enemy will... Bring distractions in. I'm using this as an example so that you can think of your own life. Whether it be in your family, you're thinking, we're in such a mess. How are we going to get out of this? How are we going to get to the other side? We're in such a pit. How are we going to move on? I'm in such a bitter place. How am I going to replace this? I'm going to say to you this morning, only Jesus can. Only He can. You cannot figure it out. You have to relinquish. You have to rest in God. And I'm praying and I'm praying that over you this morning. So pray with the person next to you this morning. As you hold their hand, we stand in agreement this morning for peace, Lord. Every fear 
Spirit of fear, go in the mighty name of Jesus. Spirit of fear that has gripped your body, the sicknesses that have come in because of fear, in Jesus' mighty name, we take authority over it now. Everything that seems big, that the enemy has placed in front of you, that is made bigger than it is, we say that our God is bigger than the situation. We will show the situation how big our God is. The problem that our God is bigger than my problems. Thank you, Lord, that fear will lift off my body now, off my soul, and off my spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As I stand in agreement with the person to my right and to my left, I declare now peace over you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Peace over your situation. Peace over your mind. Peace over your soul. Peace over your spirit. Peace over your body in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And all of God's people say, Amen. We need to take authority when we become overwhelmed by life. Remember in the storm, the disciples thought they were drowning. What were they looking at? The storm. They were looking at the waves. They were looking at the wind. They were looking at the ship creaking. Eh? Dave, you understand these things. Eh? When that thing creaking under that big wave, you think, oh, yeah, that's an ugly creak that's coming through there. Are we going to make it to the other side? Imagine in the olden days when they didn't have all the navigation stuff they have today. They were wondering, where are we on this big, vast ocean? They thought they discovered one place and they discovered another place. Amen. They end up in the wrong places. By accident, they discovered places like America and those places. Old Columbus and those guys who go, Dias, that ended up here on the, where the Dias crosses. Ending up in places that they never thought they'd end up. You see, the thing is, when you put your eyes on the storms of life, you will lose focus of God. You'll lose focus of the peace that God can bring. When you look at the waves and you look at the wind, you cannot focus on God and the wind, God and the storm. You have to say, Jesus is in my boat. I know that he's here. He's got the authority to command these waves and these storms, and he's placed that authority in me by his spirit. I will begin to speak to the storm. If you're in a storm right now, I'm going to say to you again, speak to your storm, John. Speak to your storm. Speak to that thing that you're facing right now. Command it to be calm. Even when there's turmoil in your house, I learned something long time ago. You can quietly pray, Lord, please bring peace in my house. I take authority over this chaos. I take authority over this onslaught of the enemy. And I speak peace because God commands peace. Amen. And so we speak peace over our situations. Let's move on from there this morning. Amen. When God closes a door, do you trust Him? When God closes a door, do you trust Him? The question this morning is, do you know who your Father is? Have you spent time with Him? There's some things that come up. Yes, I've got some written notes here as well. The old school pen. The pen came out. I said, oh, welcome, my old friend. You know what's important when you trust God? Is what do you believe? It matters your theology matters. Pastor Keith will be doing Bible study with you guys. Your theology matters. What you believe about God. If you believe God is out to punish you, that is what you will get. Amen. You'll walk in that punishment. If you believe God is a good father, and yes, if there is correction, God can correct. Amen. That's true. But God's correction is not to destroy you. God's correction is to build you. God's correction is because he loves you. Just like God says to you as a parent, Correct your children, punish your children because you love them. The motivation is always from a place of love, not for destruction, not to kill you, not to frustrate you, but to show you a better way. Amen. And God will do that. So what you believe is important. God is sovereign. You need to understand that. God is sovereign over every situation. He is never out of control. He's always in control of everything. God is even in control now of the world with the chaos going on. God is still sovereign. Do you know that sovereignty is not the same as power? And we learned that in our studies. Amen. Power, power. God could have taken Satan out with one sweep of his hand, one flick of his eye, one flick of his finger, and Satan would have gone, Poof. 
down there. But Satan thought that he knocked Jesus out on the cross. He thought that he took a punch to the, to the Godhead and he thought I'd killed the Son of God. And you know what? Satan, on day three, when Jesus was raised from the dead and he came back from that grave, God took Satan's punch and punched him out with his own punch. Amen. You see, the thing is when he thought death overtook Christ, Christ took over death. Amen. And the same punch that Satan thought he gave to God, God sent it back. That is the sovereignty of God, that God can use the punch that Satan has punched against you and your family and your livelihood and your health and whatever it is, God will use the same thing that Satan threw against you for his glory. That is sovereignty when God is still in control, even though it looks out of control, even though it looks that there's sickness, even though it looks like there's death. Look at Lazarus. Whoa, the Jesus, don't you care about Lazarus? Jesus, you're too late. <laughs> Remember when he arrived there? They were upset that Jesus came late. Remember Jesus said in the previous town, let's stay a bit longer. He even delayed himself to get to Lazarus. Why? For the glory of God. You see, when God is sovereign, even though it looks right now like He's not in control, He is still in control. You have to settle that in your mind because when you believe the contrary, when, you, when the door is closed on you, you cannot trust if you believe that God is not sovereign. God is sovereign. He will even use the devil to get glory. Listen to me. He will use the devil to get glory. God is sovereign. He's in control of everything. For goodness sake, God created the devil. And kicked him out of heaven. From rebellion. Pride. Wanting to be like God. And do you see that when we, when we want to sort out our own problems, it's pride. It's not a, it's not a surrender to God. It's we say we've got the clever know-how. We've been doing this for a long time. We're going to do this, continue to do this, and God will continue to move on my behalf. Do not assume things. Surrender yourself to God. Humble yourself before God. Let Him hear your prayer, and He will fight on your behalf. The enemy has been defeated. Tell the person next to you, the enemy has been defeated. Come on. Whatever your enemy is this morning, he has been defeated. He's under my feet. There we go. Put that foot down. Foot down. Foot down. I trap him deep in the ground and just like we're going to tramp certain rugby teams in the future into the ground. Uh, congratulations to the All Blacks, by the way. We're waiting for you. My blood is green, what do I say? My All Black friends, I mean, I, spoke, I spent some time with one of them yesterday before the game, and we could laugh about things. They're not my real enemies, you know, we... We like to banter South Africans, so please don't get uptight now and leave the church because I'm a Springbok and you're an All Black. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We're all in the same team. We're in the Jesus team, okay, at the end of the day. But when we get to the rugby, we are in the Springbok team, I can tell you that. <laughs> Just to tell you, we must be passionate about these things too. Amen. Am I right, Nolan? I'm just talking to the scrum there. See, these guys are like in a line here. Nolan, Andre. We're coming around, we're coming around. We're coming. Any more Springboks? We undercover Springboks, pull out your jerseys. <laughs> any, any All Blacks? Let me see, come on. There we go, Brent. There's another All Black at the back. Congratulations. There's two, two enemies next to each other. <laughs> uh, amen, but congratulations, guys. An awesome game. What a game. Wow. Anyway, let's move on from the rugby before I get distracted into these things. What you believe is important. What you believe is so important. You need to get your thoughts around God in the right order. And it's only the word of God that can teach us. God's plan will stand no matter what. The closing of a good opportunity will lead to a God opportunity. Write that down somewhere. Closing of a good opportunity will lead to a God opportunity. Let's move on from that slide into our next scripture. Isaiah 64 verse 8 says, But now, O Lord, you are our Father. Now, o Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are, you are our potter. And all we are, all we are the work of your hand. Isn't that amazing scripture? You remember that God is the potter. You are the clay. Whatever's happening in your life, God will shape it. 
He will remove the things. You know those potters when they work, they take out the impurities out of the clay because it will crack in those areas where the impurities are. And sometimes it's a painful process when God is removing things out of your life. But it is a necessary process for God to form you and shape you into the vessel that he, belongs to, that he longs for you to be. To look like Christ is not an easy path. You are on the narrow path. You can't do anything about it. This road with Christ is a narrow path. And God will remove things out of your life. If you open up your life to Him, Ivan, if you open up your life to Him, each one of you, uh, Cliffy, if you open up your life to Him this morning, God will begin to remove little things. And those are the uncomfortable seasons in our life. But it's not for our uh, killing us. It's not for us to be worse off. It's not for us to have less. It's for us to look better, fit better, do the things that God has called us to do better so that we can fit into the shape that God wants us to be and to walk into the things that God wants us to walk in. So he needs to remove some things and then he can shape us into the image of Christ. Amen. That's what that scripture speaks about. I want you to remember that we are not the potters. We are only the clay. Are you a clay in the hands of the master? And when you become clay in God's hands, he can shape you, he can form you, he can remove things, and he can add some clay. Sometimes the pot has to add some clay to get that clay right. Charmaine, am I right? All these things, amen? They have to add some things so that you can come into that shape that God wants. Let's move on from that in Jesus' name, amen. Isaiah 64, door to, doors to close. How many of you know there are doors to close? Doors of discouragement. Some of you need to close the door on discouragement this morning. Some of you feel very discouraged in this season. And I pray about these things and I ask the Holy Spirit to reveal some things to me before I stand up on a Sunday and just speak my mouth. Amen. I want God's Spirit to minister to the congregation, to those online. Some of us are struggling to get over discouragement. Some of us are struggling to get over the accusation of the enemy. You get over, some of us are struggling with what other people's opinions are. Amen. Some of us are struggling with all the fears that the enemy has brought into our heart over being inadequate, inadequacy. God doesn't want you to be inadequate because he will make you adequate. Amen. He will tell you who you are and whose you are. And as you know that, you will become the person that God has called you to be. And there's obstacles. And some of us have been listening to the lies of the enemy for many years. And God wants to remove those lies out of your mind and out of your heart. Some of you are struggling with the door or the door needs to be closed on addiction. Amen. God's speaking to you this morning. God wants to close the door on addiction completely in your life. Whether it be secret things that nobody else knows about or whether it be public things that everybody knows about. God wants to close the door of addiction this morning over your life. Amen. You need to begin to pray in that area. Open up your life completely to God. You see, it's, not, it's like this with addiction. We keep it in a box. We keep it aside. It's okay. It's my, my thing I've been living with all my life. It's my thing I've been hiding away that people don't know. It's my thing that others can't see. Or it's my thing that people can see, but I'm so comfortable with my addiction that I don't even feel challenged this morning when the pastor says it from the pulpit. I believe this morning that the Holy Spirit's knocking at your heart and saying if you have an addiction in your life, it's time to shut the door on it. And God will give you the strength. And He has shut the door already on the cross of Calvary. But you need to come in alignment with what Christ has done. He has given you freedom, but you need to step into that freedom. You need to say yes to Jesus and no to the devil. Amen? Because we need to move on from that place. These fears, these are natural fears. Some people are naturally fearing what's happening in their life. And you feel like there's, there's, there's some things in your life that brings fear into your life, which almost brings like a, a anxiety. So we need to close the door on anxiety this morning. Amen. People are anxious these days. They over-medicate because of anxiety, and they're not trusting God for a pro pro proper breakthrough. Amen. And I'm not saying that you can't take a tablet to relax. I'm saying, isn't Jesus better than relying upon five different tablets so that you can relax, so that you can sleep? So you can continue to be medicated. God wants to set you free from anxiety. The Bible says in Philippians 4 verse 6 to 7, Do not be anxious about anything, but in all things petition, pray, and give thanks to God. And God will send peace to your mind, guard your mind and your heart. Amen. He will guard your heart, your mind and your heart. He will guard them. 
from whatever the enemy has spoken over you, whatever you feel brings anxiety, whatever situation brings anxiety up, whatever past situation brings anxiety up this morning, bring it to the Lord in prayer. Petition God and give thanks for the Lord. Your breakthrough is coming this morning in Jesus' name. If I've mentioned anything that's in your life and you feel that conviction of the Holy Spirit this morning, we're going to pray together. We're going to stand as a church. We're going to pray over these things now. Let us stand together. We're shutting the door. Pastor Johan, won't you come and pray that prayer of shutting the door? I just feel that you've had authority in this area and you've seen authority over these areas of shutting doors when it comes to addiction and all other kinds of things. Bless you. So good to see you. Come on, let's pray. Before I pray, I want you to know something. This is a family that God has put together and is putting together. Never take for granted your fellowship in this church. Never take for granted. You might be a visitor. You've come for the first time or you've been coming for a while. There are many, many churches. But today, it started off from Deerwalt when he said it. This is a family that God has brought you to. There are no orphans in this family. No one in this fellowship is an orphan. You're a brother. You're a sister. You're a friend. If I may, right now, presence of God, His anointing is here. And I want to invite you. And we're going to be praying about closing the doors, don't worry, but I want to invite you right now. Some of you actually need the physical embrace of someone. In your heart, in your mind in your natural family you might not truly experience what I believe God is going to do right now many of you come from natural families that are not in agreement turmoil but God has brought you into this environment today and I want to invite you there can be some little bit of disturbance. The pastor doesn't mind. But right now, won't you just embrace? Maybe some of you might have to get out of your seat to go embrace somebody that the Lord is leading to you right now. As I said that, the Holy Spirit has shown you someone in this congregation that you need to go and embrace. Why? Because you are going to be the hands of Jesus. You are going to be the strength of Jesus. You're going to be the love of Jesus. And so, in submission to the pastor and the Holy Spirit, just take two minutes. Come on. Two minutes and go embrace someone. Come on, get out of your seat if you have to. Turn to your neighbor. Just go. There you are. I know. Go and embrace someone. And I mean embrace them. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid. Don't be insulated. That man with the blue shirt, I'd like you to come here. The t-shirt, come here. Whatever your name is. Come on, don't stand here. Go and embrace somebody. Come on, go and be Jesus. Do you mind?
if you haven't gone yet, quickly go, quickly go. Just embrace, just go and embrace. Share, just go share your love with somebody. Just go and embrace. Hmm. Thank you. As I pray, God has given everybody a sound mind. You have a mind. You have emotions. You have a will. But you also are filled and connected to the Holy Spirit. Your spirit is connected to God. And so, as we pray about closing doors, look at the door or doors that you need to close right now. I want you to look at it. I want you to face it. Whatever that door might be, you need to face it head on. That addiction, that loneliness, that depression, that sickness, that financial challenge, those words that have been spoken about you, look at it, face it. Because as you do that by faith, God is going to help you right now to close that door. And then we're going to take a prophetic action. Once I have said amen, I want you to remember this. Once I've said amen and we've prayed that prayer, I'd like you to take a step. Now, some of you have got chairs in front of you, so you might have to do a little one. But that step, that prophetic step, is a step into the open door. It's a step into the open door that God is opening for you right now. And so, Heavenly Father, as I've been given this awesome privilege to bring us before you, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come on earth in our lives as it is in heaven. Give to us today our daily bread. What is our daily bread requirement today, Heavenly Father? Our requirement of daily bread is the strength to face that door that must be closed. Give us the strength. Give us the strength right now to close those doors. In Jesus' name of Nazareth, right now, close the door. Close that door. Come on, see it. Close that door. See the chains of addiction being broken, literally. See the doors of new employment opening in Jesus' name. See marriages being restored in Jesus' name. See that door closed. Face it. And as I now pray, I encourage you, I invite you, believe me, this works. It works every single time. When you take a step of faith, prophetically, things happen. And you've been taught by the pastor who's prophetically inclined. When he says something, you know it happens. But now you, as an individual, a born-again believer, even if you're not born again, but you are with us here this morning, take a personal prophetic step 
You own it. You own the step. You own the prophetic utterance. The Bible says we, Paul says we, he wishes that we could all prophesy. Do it right now. Prophesy to yourself prophetically as I ask God now to open the door for you. And you take that step. Physically take that step. And in the spirit it will manifest. So Heavenly Father right now as we've closed doors. We now ask you to open your divine strategic door for every individual. Take that step of faith right now. Take a step forward. Do something that is going to concrete that decision. It's done in Jesus' name. It's manifesting in Jesus' name. There's an excitement happening in your hearts. There's something happening in your spirit. There's something happening in your emotion. There's something happening in your thought process. Even the thoughts that you had that were contrary to the Word of God are coming to line with the Word of God. Thank you, Jesus, for a manifestation of open doors in individuals' lives that they're walking through this week, this week, this week, this week, this week. The doors that you've opened now on Sunday will be revealed throughout this week. In this week, in this week, in this week, in this week, in this week. week. Kusata, today is a day of salvation. Today is a day of salvation. Today. Doors that have been opened spiritually. And what you've done with your own will will manifest this week. This week, I am absolutely convicted. I am convicted by the Holy Ghost. I can see. I can hear I don't grow up. This week, you are going to see the manifestation lady with a nice scarf around your neck, glasses. That thing. This week. This week. This week. And not just her, every single person. This week. Why does God allow us to point to certain people is so that the faith is built up with the rest of us. God is pointing his finger at every single person this week. Maybe next week your whole service might change because it might just be testimonies. This week, things are going to happen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Johan. Also, our condolences to the McLeod family as uh, Chris, our brother, is at the back as Tanya has gone on to be with the Lord, passed away, and um, we're going to have a funeral next Sunday after the service at about half past 11 here at the church on the Sunday, and all the McLeods, uh, Chris's sister standing with him, Michelle, and everyone uh, standing with you, Chris. Ellen, Pastor Galia, our condolences and our deepest sympathies for you and the family. And we're going to get together as a church in half past 11. Celebrate Tanya's life. Amen. And to the family, we continue to walk with you. We know the comfort of the Holy Spirit is with you. And we know that God will bring provision in every area, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a good Sunday.